Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering in today's video is components and resultants and we'll be using the rectangular method in order to solve this problem shown on the screen. So what we have here is that we have four forces that act on bolt A as shown and we need to determine the resultant of all the forces on this bolt. So a few things here is that we're going to use, as I said, the rectangular method. And the rectangular method can also be known as the triangular rule, if you want to call it that as well. And this method is best when you have, well, I think it's the best overall method, but definitely the best uh, when you have more than two forces that you have to find the result in between. So that's number one. Number two is that when we solve for this resultant, we're going to take the longer path of getting there, just showing you some more drawn out steps. Um, and really it's only like the beginning parts a little drawn out a little bit further, uh, just to show you where everything's coming from. And as you get better and better with these types of problems, you can make it much faster. And lastly, we are looking for a result in between these four forces. So my resultant should be somewhere in here. If I get a result in that is over here somewhere, I've done something wrong. So the result in between forces should always be, well, between your forces somewhere. So be on the lookout for that. So what we're going to do is our first step is that we are going to determine the X and Y components for each of these forces. So these forces themselves will be components of the resultant. And what I'm looking for is the component of each of these in the X and the Y directions. So let's start with our first one, which looks like this, where we have our X, we have our Y, and this force which is, I'm just going to go this way because for some reason they call this F2 and then this F1, then this F3, then this, this F4. The naming doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's not really in order, but we're just going to go from left and we're going to work our way clockwise around here. So here we have 80 newtons and it is saying that we are 20 degrees off of the Y vertically. So the components for this one, because this arrow is up and to the left, the components must be up and to the left in the X and Y directions to match that general direction of this force. So my X will be pointed leftwards and my Y will be pointed upwards. So for each of these components for this 80 Newtons of force, we're gonna take my main force of 80 Newtons and then you're gonna multiply it by either the sine of that angle or cosine of that angle. Now the X direction will be the sine because the angle is off of the Y. When the angle is off of your direction, that will be cosine with that direction because cosine is adjacent and sine is opposite since the X is opposite the angle. It's not touching the angle. That will be sine. So my X direction will be sine of 20 degrees and my Y will be cosine of 20 degrees. So my X pops out to be roughly 27.36 newtons and it is pointed to the left for that component and then fy is 75.18 newtons in the upward direction and one thing you can make sure or just double check as you're going along here that these components make sense the fy or these uh, 80 newtons is pointed more in the vertical direction than it is in the horizontal direction so that means the y is going to absorb more the component in the y is going to be a lot larger than the horizontal one because this 80 is closer to the y. So the y of this component is larger than the fx, so that makes sense. Alrighty, so let's move on to our second one, which is I just did the 150 next because it's in order. <laughs> so we would have our x and we would have our y. And this is the process that I'm talking about is a little drawn out. Um, the next step is where you can just go to if you feel comfortable with it. But this just shows you each little component broken down or each force broken down into its components. So we have 150 Newtons, and then we are 30 degrees off of the horizontal there. So since this 150 is up into the right, my components must be up into the right to match that direction. So the FX for this one will be 150, my force, and this time it will be cosine of the angle because the angle is off of the X. Anytime it is off of that direction, you're gonna use cosine with that direction because cosine is adjacent. And then Fy will be 150 Newtons and this time it will be sine of 30 degrees. 
So my FX pops out to be 129.9 newtons and it is acting to the right. And then my Y pops out to be 75 newtons and it is acting upward. Once again, does that make sense that the X is that much higher than the Y? Well, yeah, because the FY or this 150 is only 30 degrees off of the X and then it is 60 off of the Y. So it is closer to the horizontal direction than the vertical. So I would expect the horizontal to be larger. All righty. And then let's do what they are calling F4. So this is 100 newtons in the down right direction, and it is only 15 degrees off of the X. So because of this force being down into the right, my components in the X, Y direction will be down and to the right. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get our FX. So it'd be my force of 100 newtons. And this time the angles off of the X again, just like the previous one. So this will be cosine of 15 degrees. Cosine is adjacent, whatever the angle is coming off your direction. And then Fy will be 100 newtons. And this time it will be sine of 15 because the angle's opposite the Y. It is not touching the Y. So my Fx pops out to be for this one, 100 sines, cosines 15 gives me 96. 0.6 newtons to the right, and then the Fy gives me 25.9 newtons in the downward direction. Alrighty, so I just have one more to go, and that is the F3, which they are calling F3. So what I have here is the xy direction, and this force is going straight down in the y direction. So whenever you have a force that is directly along one of your one of your axis directions. The other one is just zero. It has no component in the horizontal direction. It is 100% vertical. Oh, it's not 100, it's 110. So it is 100% vertical of 110 newtons in the downward direction. Alrighty, so basically I've taken this entire picture and I've broken it up into all of these components in the X and Y directions. So why did I do that? Well, my next step coming up here, what I'm going to do is I am going to sum all my components in the X direction, and I'm going to sum all my components in the Y direction. So let's start with the Y first. I'm going to take all my components in the upward direction as positive, everything in the downward direction as negative. So let's just go ahead and gather up all our FY forces. So we have 75.18. It is positive because it is upward. And then I have my second one of 75. Once again, it is pointed upward, so it will be positive. And then I have one that is 25.9. It is downward, so it'd be minus. And then I have down 110 Newtons. So that is also negative 110. And when we tally all this together, we end up with a positive 14.28 Newtons, the positive indicates that it is in the upper direction. So out of all of these forces, they are moving 14.29 Newtons in the upper direction. All right, now let's repeat the process for the X direction. And we're gonna to take to the right as positive, everything to the left is negative. So we have 27.36 Newtons, it is going left, so it is negative. And then I have plus 129, because it's going to the right. And then I have plus 96.6, because it's going to the right. And then lastly, zero over here. So I'm not going to include it. If you wanted to, you could write plus zero. So adding all this together, I get 199.14 Newtons. It came out to be positive. So it is going to the right. So what do I have here? What have I done? Well, this is what I've essentially done. I've taken all my forces, and I've turned them into these two main components of my overall combined resultant. So it looks something like this, where this is my X, this is my Y, and this was the original point A where everything's acting. Well, from my components here, I have 199.14 Newtons here, and I have 14.28 Newtons here. My resultant will be somewhere between these two. And how do I find that? Well, if you look at it and you think about it, 
the X and the Y are at a 90 degree angle. So just like using the parallelogram theorem where you copy and paste forces, you could copy and paste the Y force here. So if we have our resultant R here, we have our X component of 199.14 Newtons, and then we would have our 14.28 Newtons of force in the Y direction. And that completes a triangle, as this is why I said earlier, sometimes it's called the triangular method. And since the X and Y are in the X and Y direction, they're orthogonal. So this is a 90 degree or a 90 degree angle. So this is a right triangle. So the only things that I need here is my resultant force and my angle off of the X there. Well, how do you find the hypotenuse side of a right triangle? Well, you just use Pythagorean theorem. Just use your forces here. You're typically probably used to using distances in that, but you can also use forces. So my resultant force will just be the square root. And if you write it out in variable form, it will be the summation of the X forces squared plus the summation of the Y forces squared. And it will always be that. So this will be my 199.14 Newton squared plus my 14.28 Newton squared. And once you square them, add them up, square root them, it pops out to be 199.65 Newtons. And since my components are going up and to the right, my resultant has to be going up and to the right. So there's my resultant value. Now I just need the angle, I need its location. So just using the right triangles again here, so we're gonna go with alpha, which is my angle off of the X, which will be the tangent inverse of my Y, which is 14.28 over my X of 199.14. And that gives me a total of 4.1 degrees off of the X. So it is okay to leave your answers like this in, in my book because you showed all the work previously. But if you have a stickler as a person who's grading this, I would just redraw it just to be safe. So here's your X, here's your Y, here's point A in which everything was acting. The resultant force, which is 199.65 Newtons in that upward right direction. And then just throw the angle on of 4.1 degrees. And that is a completed final answer with no room for error or judgment error on whoever's grading that. So. And that's how you would find the resultant for multiple forces. And just to reiterate real quick, let me scroll back up here. If it wants me to scroll back up, there we go. As I said, as you get better, you don't have to do this portion up here with splitting everything up into an X and Y component written out. You can just visually see what's going on here and then jump straight to your FY and FX equations. Like for instance, in the FY, instead of having 75.18, you could just write 80 cosines of 20. And then for the 75, you could put plus 150 sines of 30. And then skip the steps once you feel comfortable enough to do that. But if you're just starting out, better to just do it this way that is shown on the screen until you get familiar with it. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel because this is, what part is this? This is part 13, so we do have 12 other parts um, showing this kind of methodology, and it's kind of intermixed with the parallelogram rule. So um, also, if you haven't done so already, uh, please uh, like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel, because all that does help us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.